Specialty Doors Extended Version. Welcome to Building Knowledge 101. Join our experts as they explore the properties and applications of specialty entrances. So now let's take a look at some of the door options that you have available as architects to choose from. So I mentioned when we look at traffic flow, there's low, medium, and high. So let's start with the door design specifically for high traffic or abusive applications. So again, think about convention centers, sports facilities, airports, transportation centers. You have people moving very rapidly, often carrying luggage, burdened down. So they're hitting the doors with their bodies as opposed to their arms slamming into them. It's nonstop. Some of these facilities are open 24-7. Others, like sports facilities, half the people leaving are angry because the team lost so they're hitting the doors taking out on somebody so here you can see a monumental heavy wall type door this is designed for this high abusive traffic area you notice here the wall sections are very heavy so where your hardware attachments are you've got quarter inch wall sections then notice here there's an interlock so when the door closes it interlocks with the adjacent jam beside it and then pairs of astragals here at the meeting between the pairs and again, an interlock over on this side. So this is designed for very high abusive traffic areas. Now kind of stepping down a little bit in performance is a heavy wall door. Most manufacturers offer a heavy wall door. These typically have 3 16 wall sections. Again, thicker wall sections for hardware attachment. We found out years ago in high schools when the bell went off at three o'clock and the kids ran down the hallway and slammed into the doors, they were hitting so fast and hard that the closers are being pulled out of the doors. So heavy wall was a solution to that, giving you 3 16 wall section, so you have greater thread count for attaching hardware into the door, and it holds up against that abusive traffic of high schoolers and college kids slamming into doors, moving quite rapidly. So this, again, is designed for a heavy traffic or high traffic area. FRP doors, fiberglass reinforced polyester, these have really been taking off in the past few years. They've been on the market for a number of years, but the growth here has been very, very strong. These are seen as an excellent alternative to a hollow metal door. Hollow metal doors are quite often used on the back side of a building, maybe around a loading dock area, back entrances. But when they get scratched, they start to rust. If they ever bend, they never close up correctly. They're really considered expendable. Hollow metal doors don't last. The FRP is an excellent option or alternative to hollow metal in that it's not going to scratch, it's not going to rust, it's never going to bend, it's always going to hold its shape and always seal and close properly. Also, this being seen as a great use for doors at the end of hallways where you're not a main entrance, but an end of hallway in areas where your heavy traffic flow with carts, like in a hospital where gurneys are being pushed around and through doorways, FRPs are excellent for that application. Basically, they start out with an extruded rail and style, have a fiberglass panel on the exterior and then dense foam interior. So the fiberglass panel is available in various different colors. You can come up with whatever color you want. And since you've got that foam core, it's very easy to use a saw to cut out whatever type light you want. So as an architect, if you're working with an owner and they have a particular shape they want to see on a door with an FRP, it's very easy to become creative and cut out lights that follow whatever brand image or kind of brand identity a company might have or that tells you something about the building by change in the daylight. So again, that's an FRP, fiberglass reinforced polyester door. Thermally broken entrances, these have been available for a number of years, but with changing energy codes, we're really seeing a greater demand for this type entry. For years, they were kind of relegated to the back of a building, to an area going out to a break room or side halls, and they're an excellent for that application. Think about any door in a building that's not used on a regular basis. It has to function as a wall majority of the times, a door going from a break room to an outdoor patio or exit doors at the end of hallways, not the main entrances. And those are doors that are closed majority of the time, so they need to function as a wall. So they need to have thermal performance. This is where we've seen thermally broken doors used for years, and they perform very, very well there. Uh, but energy codes are getting to the points where we're starting to see main entrances being required to be thermally broken also. So you can see in the examples here, you got two aluminum sections. Here's one section to the interior, here's a section to the outside. These are joined together with a polyamide insert, then a pour into bridge uh, frame adjacent to it. 
And then over here, you can see the same thing, polyamide inserts there on one inch insulated glass here, giving you good, strong thermal performance. So here's a thermal imaging to kind of give you an example of how thermal doors perform. You can see the door on the left is a standard commercial entrance with one inch insulated glass in it. You can see the insulated glass unit is performing well. It's maintaining cold to the outside. You can see with a darker purple here than the brighter yellow to the inside. So this is performing, but in this area, you can see it's cold all the way through the bottom rail. So we're losing heat through this door. This is a thermally clad door. There's a PVC cladding here with an aluminum shield on the interior screw. So you've got exterior metal here, interior metal here, separated by a PVC cladding here, and then the insulated glass unit. So this is performing well. You can see you've got a darker green or a lot of green here. So this is staying a little bit warmer to the interior. Here you can see a complete thermally broken door. There's polyamide inserts here in the bottom rail and in the threshold here. And on the inside, you can see the darker green. So this is maintaining a warmer area on the inside and colder on the outside. So the thermally broken door is functioning and performing as it should on that third illustration. So examples like this, this is a Colorado a library in Colorado Springs. You can see how cold it is on the outside, snow on the exterior, yet on the inside, very warm and soft. So you've got a good thermally broken glazing system and closing the building envelope. And in this case, you're using thermally broken doors at the exits at the end of the hallway to allow exit to the exterior. But those are thermally broken doors, again, to maintain the integrity of the thermal break throughout the building envelope. Examples like this is where thermally broken doors really do pay off. Bifold doors, again, a product that recently has been growing in popularity. Auto showroom doors often need to have large openings where the dealership can drive cars through the elevation from the interior to the exterior. So this is where the bifold started with auto showroom dealerships. They kind of spring out from there. Restaurants are taking them on, hospitals for courtyards, meeting areas, trying to join interior and exterior meeting areas together. Here's a nice example of an auto showroom door. You can see over here on the far left, we have a man door. So this opens anytime you need to. So this allows full day access by, for anybody walking through here. But then when you need to, you can see there's a butt hinge here. Then these have hinges on the inside butt hinge here. These three leaves fold up to one side, opening that whole elevation when it's needed to bring cars in and out of the showroom area. Here's an example of a meeting room. This opened from the interior to the exterior, joining the spaces together, or an office area like you see on the far right opening up the reception area with a meeting room. So bifold doors in these applications allow you to open up space or close it down into smaller meeting areas. So let me give you an example of what a bifold door looks like. Here you can see the man door swinging, allowing everyday access. And then when needed, the bifolds open up, allowing this greater, larger elevation. So now you can drive cars very easily through that and get them from the interior to the outside. Then when they're closed up, you're again pr providing protection from the interiors, from the exterior space on the inside. Balcony doors, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but let's take a little bit closer look at them. We've seen a great growth in high-rise multifamily projects throughout a number of cities in the United States. This has been a very strong growth area. Years ago, when it first took off, we were taking commercial doors and putting them onto condos on high-rise buildings. Commercial doors really don't have great air and water performance, and they're not thermally broken. It did not meet the need. So balcony doors, terrace doors were created to give you higher thermal performance, higher air and water performance, and much greater interior comfort in living areas than you could get from a, just a standard commercial door. So you can see in the illustration here, this is a section cut vertically, and here it is horizontally. These are completely thermally broken all the way through the door and the frame, including the threshold. They're using polyamide inserts to join two separate extrusions together. And the goal of the polyamide insert is this a low conductive material that you're inserting between the metal on the interior and the metal on the exterior. So the low conductive material cuts down and slows the transfer of heat through that area. So that's the first thing to look at. They're designed to meet very high thermal performance. Then also notice a high threshold here on the interior. So these give it much higher water performance. In a high rise building, as you get taller up on the building, your wind loads and air pressures increase. So you need higher 
water performance. So this has a raised threshold on the inside, giving you much better water performance. As far as air performance, notice there's two sets of seals, where commercial doors just have one bulb gasket around a single acting door. In this door, when it closes up, there's two lines of, of gaskets that seal off for air performance. So balcony doors are designed for this high-rise multifamily application giving you increased thermal performance and air and water performance that you need for maintaining interior thermal comfort of a living area. Another type of that elevation that our entrance is available to you is the all glass entrances. These are very beautiful, very monumental, create a great focal point. You can see in this picture how you were just drawn to how bright and crisp and clear that is. They don't fit every application. They're not thermally broken. So in some cases, energy might codes might drive you away from that but if you have the opportunity for a very bright focal point entrance very clean look all glass doors really make a statement when you get along the coastal area high velocity wind zones then you're going to be concerned about hurricane and if you're doing a government project you need to be concerned about blast mitigation so be aware of this if there are codes that impact you around where your where your project is they're going to drive you from a, in a high velocity wind zone area to a hurricane application. You need to make sure that you have doors and entrances that have been tested in accordance with ASTM E1886 and E1996 and TAS 201, 202, and 203. These are standards for testing impact applications. That is all we have time for in this video. If you'd like to watch more of our 101 video series, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Conair Company, Inc.